I am very, very tempted to push this button. But I need to be patient, because to truly know how an MC20 comes to life, or well, just starting the engine, that's not enough. Physical performance is not all a supercar is about, and despite all the craftsmanship there is in Modena, there are so many technological aspects behind the scenes, all equally important if you want to ultimately and confidently push that magical button. But while it's true that approximation is never appreciated in the automotive field, it is also true that there's never enough time when you have to create an entirely new vehicle. Consequently, you should know that the various departments of the Maserati Product Development Center employ about 1,500 technicians with a very clear idea in their minds. What you're about to see inside the Innovation Lab via Emilia Ovest is one of the marvelous protagonists in the development of the new MC20. The current dynamic simulator, DIM, driver in motion. This is one of Maserati's spearheads. Within the department, it's known as the experience room. As Fabio Giardino explains to us, here the correct method is the fundamental strategy behind the best use of time and resources, even before the most advanced hardware, which is certainly not missing in this super simulator, which can also boast a first-class movement capacity, thanks to its nine actuators with a lateral and longitudinal range of as much as 2.5 meters. Especially during braking, there can never be enough space. Braking is one of the most critical aspects in simulation. This is why we enhance the driving experience by giving the driver additional information. The information comes from the active seat and from the seat belts. In particular, the seat belts tense up during a braking maneuver to enhance the feedback the driver receives while braking. As far as the lateral space is concerned, two and a half meters are more than enough to carry out maneuvers. And in addition, this is a simulator that allows you to increase the scope, which means you can test not only handling maneuvers, but also comfort maneuvers. This is because it can go very high in terms of frequency, especially in vertical excursions. So thanks to the DIM, it's possible to concretely reduce the development times for a new car, reducing as much as 50% on the time to market, with the possibility of performing 90% of the car's testing process on the simulator, with endless advantages, especially when the logistics are complicated by large distances or adverse weather conditions, or again, for instance, by the ongoing pandemic. But not everything is just one click away, as it seems, at least not in the beginning. All of this requires months and weeks of work to plan the so-called virtual car we're talking about, and where we insert all the virtual parts that make up the vehicle. So we're talking about months and months of preparing models, vision models, of tracking all the modifications, and at that point, once everything is ready, you just need three minutes to change the track or to change the model. And how long does it take to change the tires? Even less, 10 seconds, it's just one click. So the simulator is still a fundamental component in the development of a car, a digital pillar up to a certain point, because it is concretely effective in finding setups and solutions that will then be applied in the production to make the product even more attractive to the clientele of a supercar. These images probably don't sufficiently reveal the physical aspect of this simulator, which is really concrete. And for those who, like me, have gotten on board for the first time, 10 minutes of driving in here, it's truly intense, since the accelerations reproduced on your body are, well, well, you can definitely feel them. The funny thing is that I'd chosen the racetrack in Modena because I know it by heart, so I thought that I'd be able to drive fast right away, but that's not how it went. So I preferred to find out a bit more about the DIM from someone who's covered quite a few laps with it at a much higher average speed than mine. There has been an unbelievable evolution in the past three years. The past three years in terms of simulation have been exponential. I can tell you that when I started, I was among the first to work with the simulator, for Formula One even, in late 2004, early 2005. 
And sometimes I have to smile when I think about where we were then and where we are today with simulation. As you can imagine, the evolution continues. This represents the benchmark now in terms of simulators, especially for the development of road vehicles and GT cars. Here on the same day, I can test as many as 40 different tire models and select the best three options and then test them physically on the vehicle when it's ready. If you just think about testing 40 tires physically on a car at the same time, you would need maybe three whole days at least. Or sometimes when we try several different engine maps or various types of engines in terms of their characteristics, one click is all it takes. The thing that not everyone knows about this experience room is that virtual reality is all very nice, but in the room next door, there's an actual full-scale vehicle which receives and manages the input coming from the simulator and sends back its feedback, thereby contributing to the selection of data that gets as close as possible to the real expectations that the test drivers plan even before they get on board an MC20 prototype. And here we are, finally. We've danced with the V12. We've seen how a sports car like this one can be created and conceived around a winning engine like the Nettuno. And then we've discovered how useful a simulator can be in shortening the development times to allow you to do this as quickly as possible. Although I won't be alone. Just pretend that you're in your own car. It's a bit like being in the film Twins with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito who find themselves having lots of dads. Well, I realized that that's the same thing that happens constantly with the MC20. Certainly, Federico Landini is one of those dads who are very present. He immediately felt very strongly about this project. In fact, on his smartphone, he jealously keeps the photograph of the first drawing made on his whiteboard. That was the beginning of a chapter that still needed to be written at the time and which has now become a reality. It's an amazingly fascinating reality that should be explored through the words of someone who can express in a language that has just the right amount of technicality, passion and competence from every valve. This vehicle is a development, a process testing vehicle. So from the point of view of the hardware, it is perfectly in line with production vehicles. From the point of view of the software, all calibrations are temporary and being developed precisely. So the buzzer is pointing out that there is some software that is sending signals which are interpreted as abnormal by the computer. But in reality, they are abnormal only because they are still being developed. Okay, so we took off in a somewhat technical field, I know, but that's okay because this is not the final test of the MC20, nor is it the test of the prototype, because in fact you can already find these details with every technical specification on our YouTube channel and on Motor1.com's website. Here and now, our mission is to trace, along with the engineers and the technicians, the most important kilometers in the development of a new supercar from Modena, which, in addition to the mid-rear engine, immediately had other clear goals. Producing a vehicle that could remain in the iconic history, in the history of an important automotive company like Maserati, in the history of the entire automotive industry, like a milestone, that could combine incredible track qualities and be easily transported to a racing world which Maserati wants to return to and offer the lucky owner top usability in the segment. Usability, which means comfort, which means ease of handling, which means driving pleasure. Because if a vehicle is not pleasant to drive, obviously the client will have a hard time appreciating it in everyday life or wanting to appreciate it in everyday life. 
And if we must start with the electronics department, let's do it, but let's do it at top speed. And sorry for the wordplay, which works less well in other languages, but in Italian, trust me, it works like a charm. The three modes of the vehicle can unquestionably be appreciated when racing, not because it allows you to reach top performance, but because it allows the vehicle to express the best of its character, depending on your request. That is, the vehicle will go as fast as you decide to act on the accelerator. It's not like just because you put it in racing mode, it necessarily needs to be taken to its limit. Okay, let's put it in racing mode though. Okay, let's put it in racing mode. Keep the button pushed towards the right because it needs your consent. And there it is, in racing mode, right away. Gear shift in manual. Already the gear shift is telling me something. Yes, already the shift is faster. The throttle pedal map is much more direct and the steering has a different weight to it. The suspension goes into racing mode. The differential and stability controls go into position to offer top support and assistance to the driver. Here the control systems don't act against the driver but they are activated to help the driver best express his driving pleasure. Should we try this out on the nice right bend? And in the meantime, the Natuno also makes itself heard, doesn't it? And now here we are in third gear, I'm barely on the throttle, but there's so much torque. Surprisingly, this is my first drift in this car, and it seemed that I'd done many, but I can assure you that it communicates a lot, despite the fact that the suspensions are, now let's say, on the more rigid setting. Because if you want to drive more, more dirty, you could even? You could deselect the suspension exactly. At that point, the suspension setup becomes softer and therefore allows for the load to shift more easily and ensures higher rolls, both crossed and symmetrical. Yes, but it's good. An incredible boost reserve, huh? Soft racing mode is beautiful. Oh my God. Yeah, but the soft racing is something that the... Yeah, soft racing is... Well, I, I'm sorry, I know you've spent millions of hours on racing mode to make everything more stiff, and I'm sure there are some people who are obsessed with driving clean, but... Test drivers, for instance, they don't want it. And do you know why? Because they tell you, but you have racing mode, which is fine. Yeah, th yeah, but they're right. I mean, I, I really respect them a lot, but I'm sorry, for me, this map is perfect. Okay, come on. Try to do this right and left bend here with two amazing drifts. The search for the perfect steering is obsessive. It has been a fixed idea of mine for as long as I can remember. On this vehicle, we started with the development of a dedicated suspension scheme, which is one of its kind in this world. With the development of a dedicated suspension scheme, which is one of its kind in the world, both on the front and rear, we have overlapping double wishbone suspensions, but with semi-virtual on the lower level, and this allows us to obtain an impressive load modularity and linearity on the front, which you might be able to confirm, and the absolutely unbelievable precision of a stout front suspension combined with an absolute control of the rear. So the bond that unites the Manatino switch and the steering wheel is this. The steering wheel has to allow you to place the vehicle exactly where you want, well, the Manatino switch needs to help you make that maneuver as fast as possible and as pleasantly as possible. So from the simulator to the track and during this stage, what is one and what is the other four? Well, in the simulator, we have been able to reach 95% of the development of the elasto kinematics of the vehicle and to discriminate and select the infinite variations that you have at the beginning of the program. And what does that mean? It means that in order to define the steering ratio, for instance, how much is it lock to lock? So we have a lock to lock of 720 degrees with 11 and a half in external ratio. So 
what happens is that we developed this steering system starting from 12, 13 different steering ratios. Then we narrowed it down more and more and defined two that we like and defined two that we liked in the various driving configurations. And those two we then took to the track with the physical car to test them. Just think that in the past, trying out one steering ratio or another implied either having 13 different vehicles and spending an entire day testing them or having 13 days with one vehicle because you need to change the steering boxes and kinetics of the steering column. So you need to disassemble the vehicles and you need about a day to change the steering boxes and column to define the perfect steering ratio, which is obviously given by the ratio between the steering rack and the OMO kinetics of this column on the entire excursion of the steering angle. Among prototypes and pre-series units, Federico Landini can also boast thousands of kilometers behind the wheel of this new Trident. Test drives that are added to the more than 2.5 million kilometers covered by all of Maserati's testers among reality and simulator, without considering that on the test bench, the Natuno engine has already covered more than 200 times the vehicle's full life approval. And with all of this in mind, try to imagine the very first thing that Federico decided to let me experience once he got back behind the wheel. Did you drive over the curbs as much before as well, or was this something that started with the MC20? No, it started with the MC20. Usually you don't drive over those curbs. No, exactly. A small flashback. Uh, it can be useful to understand this animosity on the curb comfort issue. A battle that was luckily won by far by comfort, obviously. And contrary to what you might think, developing a car dedicated exclusively to the track and which consequently needs to be ultra fast and nothing else is much simpler than trying to achieve outstanding results in terms of performance and driving pleasure. A balance, in short, both on the track and on the road. And this is precisely where the MC20 shows a character that, if necessary, knows how to be elegantly tame. So I challenge you to spend all the time I spent with the Maserati team without being entranced by the purity of the deep emotions that each one of them feels for this creature. Just try and you'll see it's impossible. And I'm not just talking about what you perceive on board the vehicle while it's in motion. Well, that would be all too easy, even while the car is standing still. These talents, these made in Motor Valley specialists, are capable of making you fall in love with every square centimeter of this project. As they explain how every single part of it has its own precise purpose with specific costs and benefits. A car which, in addition, is already ready for the future variations on the theme, whether electric or racing oriented. Here, if we need to change the front chassis, our guys, it's a bit like when you saw, and I don't know if you noticed, the Toyota that broke its gear shift at Le Mans. They came in and in just 17 minutes, they dismounted the entire rear axle of the vehicle. I mean, you can only do that if the car has been conceived for it. It's not like you can just dismount a rear axle in a garage at 2 a.m. in 17 minutes. And this is a bit of the same story. So this modularity, this ease and assistance, the fact that all regulations are already taken into consideration, the vehicle is already ready to do certain things. Another example, the opening of the gullwing doors. Harmonious, spectacular, but also useful when parking close to the sidewalk. And also, you never get your pants dirty when getting in and out of the car. Another highly interesting feature is the aerodynamic canalization, which has been studied in every detail. Without considering the different workmanships of the carbon fiber, with a long or short fiber, also called anistropic, with the two examples of this finish, which can be found outside and inside the door respectively. Everything is perfectly combined. Sportiness and elegance, and even in the cockpit, this consistency is maintained even if many of the details can't be appreciated on a prototype like this one. But the ergonomics and the presence of few buttons and the great desire it triggers in you of getting on board and, and never getting out again, that definitely wins you over right away. 
and it will continue to do so in the next episode with this car on this bend and on this racetrack. There is all the best of Modena, of Motor Valley, and I'm only glad if you were excited by this journey from the virtual to the real, and if your hearts were warmed a bit. Ultimately, now you need to cool down a little bit, because if you think that the development of a supercar like the MC20 ends here, you are dead wrong.